Okay, today we'll be discussing linear programming. Linear programming is pretty much just graphing linear equations to find an optimal solution. An optimal solution can be, for example, like maximizing profit for an industry or minimizing cost or so on. So it's a very useful application for linear algebra. So with this problem down here, for say this company trying to maximize their profit given this this linear equation, but it's subject to these constraints. These constraints might be the amount of resources or materials they have or whatsoever. So our first step to any linear programming problem is to find the x and y intercepts for each of the constraints. Now the reason we're going to plot plot this graph using x and y intercepts is because we're going to be using a method called the corner point method. And of course we can just graph these equations, you know, find the slope, find the y intercept, and graph that way. But if we use x, y intercepts, we can find the corner points much easier. So that's the reason why they approach it this way. So for the first prop, for the first constraint, we have x and y. So when um, when x is zero, our y is 30, and when our y is 0, our x is 50. For the second constraint, when our x is 0, our y is negative 5, and when our y is 0, our x is 10. For the final constraint, when our x is 0, our y is 50. When our y is 0, our y is 30. So, as you can see, I'm just finding the x and y intercepts. So, these are the y intercepts. This is the x intercept. y intercepts. The x intercept. The y intercept. And the x intercept. So, pretty much that y intercept is where the graph hits the y axis and when the x is 0, and the x intercept being where the graph hits the x-axis where the y is zero. And we just do that by, as, as I did over here, I just make the x zero and just solve for the y inequality. So if the y is zero, solve for the x inequality. So for example, when I set the x equals zero here, I'm just left with 5y is less than or equal to 150. When I solve the inequality, I get y equals 30. So it's just simple inequalities you're solving here. Okay, so and this is also a very important constraint. This is called the non-negativity constraint. And this has to be applied to all linear programming problems. The non-negativity constraint pretty much means that the x is going to be greater than or equal to 0, or the y is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So you have, you can think of it as like um, a horizontal and a vertical asymptote at the origin. Pretty much meaning that our solution, or our feasible region, is always going to be in the first quadrant because we're trying to maximize profit. We don't want our solution to be in the second, third, or fourth quadrant where the x or the y is going to be negative. We're trying to maximize profit, so it only makes sense that it's going to be in the first quadrant. Okay, so now let's finally graph the y and x intercepts to see what kind of feasible region we get. So for our first constraint, our x or y intercept is 0, 30. So that's over here. Let me go ahead and use a different color marker. So we have over here. Let me get a better marker for you guys. So we have over here. This is the first instrument. This is going to be zero and thirty. And our our x intercept is going to be fifty zero. So that's over here. It's going to be fifty and zero. Okay. Now for our second constraint, our y-intercept is 0, negative 5. So that's approximately right over here. 0, negative 5. And our x-intercept is a 10, 0, which is simply over here. So this is 10, this is 0. And finally, our um, for our last constraint, our x and our y-intercept is 0, 50. So that's over here. And that's 0, 50. And our, y, and our 
x stands up to that z, 30, 0. So 30, 0. OK, so now we just have to really just connect the dots. You can think of it that way. So for our first constraint, we have 0, 30, which is right here. And then we have 50, 0. So we have to connect these two. Now, obviously, this, this, this linear equation keeps on going to infinity, but we only care about the first quadrant. As I mentioned here, our solutions, our optimal solution is constraint to the first quadrant. So we're just going to draw the, the linear equation from 0, 30 to 50, 0, which is another reason why they graph this using x and y steps, because the first quadrant is all we really care about. So for our second constraint, we had 0, negative 5, which is right here, and we had 10, 0. So we have to connect these two. So we have to, this looks like this. Boom. So it intersects the graph somewhere over there. And finally, for our third constraint, we had 0, 50, which is right over here. Then we had 30, 0, which is right over here. So it's going to connect 0, 50, and 30, 0. I guess something like this. It's best to use a ruler on these problems so you can see exactly where it intercepts. So finally, when you graph all of these um, linear equations, you have to find something called a feasible region. And the feasible region is pretty much the region where all the constraints are met. And if you look, all the constraints are met over here. So this is our feasible region. So our solutions can only lie in the feasible region. So we have to cut this off. And we don't care about this region, right? Because remember, non-negativity. If I put it in this region, I get a negative value, non-negativity. So that's why I cut it off like that. OK, so that's the feasible region. And the corner point method says that our, our optimal solution is a lot at a corner point in our feasible region, which pretty much means point at our feasible region, one of these is bound to be our optimal region. Okay? And everything outside the feasible region is called the infeasible region, denoted by IF. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to continue this video for part two because I don't think I'm going to have enough time to finish. So just scroll on to part two to see the rest of the video.